Hello and welcome to the SecondAdam.tv, your online church, your place for prophetic counseling, this weekly sermon, and for this the ecclesia, the body. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Amen. You're part of an online church here at the Second Adam. We're in Wilmington, North Carolina, but guess where else we are? We're in California. We're in Israel. We're in Greece. We're in we're wherever you are. In fact, where are you? Let us know. Amen. That's the beauty of an online church. You get to learn about people and discover people in all parts of the world. So do me a favor. Let me know where you're at. Let me know where you're from. Be sure to place a note in the comments. Be sure to be here every Sunday night. 9 p.m. for the thesecondadam.tv. And always go back and check out our archives. Look at what God is doing. Look at the, the messages he's brought to us. We have a number of sermons up already. We have a ton of video blogs because we believe that we're to take the gospel and we're to take it into the world. And I want to say thank you for trusting us, for believing in us, for supporting us. And I pray this is a blessing to you. It's Palm Sunday. Amen. I love Palm Sunday. And for years, I, I knew what Palm Sunday was. It was the Sunday before Easter. Um, I mean, if you didn't have your Easter suit ready or the women didn't have their Easter dress ready, you went to church on Palm Sunday and then you went shopping afterwards if you could. You had to get your Easter attire ready. But Palm Sunday is so much more to that. And I want to jump into prophetic reality uh, the prophetic reality of the palm. Uh, why was it a palm Sunday? Why did they lay the palm leaves down at the feet of Jesus? And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about who Jesus is to you. So let's begin with this. Number one, do me a favor. Share this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, Vimeo, you're watching this on the secondadam.tv, click the like button. Click the share button. Let someone else know about this. It will be a blessing to them, and we truly appreciate you for that. Now, I'm going to jump in. We're going to jump in with Scripture today, Luke 19, 28 through 44. And so bear with me, read with me, grab a hold of the Word. That's the beauty of an online church. You can click pause. You can read along with me. Amen. So we're just going to read out of the Word of God, and we're going to go into Luke 19, 28 through 44. And when he had spoken this, he went before ascending unto Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he came near Bethpage and Bethany at, at the Mount called, listen to me, the Mount of Olives. I love this. He sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village against you, enter, and you'll find a cult. Listen, there's a word of knowledge. People say, well, did Jesus move into prophetic? Watch this, He word of knowledge. Where a, never, a man has never sat on his cult, loose him and bring him your two unto me. If any man says, why do you loose him? Then say unto him, the Lord has need of him. There's things in our life that we have held on to that we've never used we need to unloose and we need to release into the work of the Lord. We need to give into the work of the Lord because the Lord has need of it. Amen. Another prophetic hidden nugget here. And they that sent were went their way and found even as he said unto them. And they were loosing the colt. The owner said to them, why do you loose the colt? Come on, they're walking to a man's colt and they're just unloosing them. Because the Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus and they set their garments upon the colt and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, he, they spread their clothes on the way. We'll talk about that in a moment. And when he came near, even now at the city of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that had been seen, saying, Blessed be the King that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Oh, hallelujah. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude came and said, Master, rebuke your disciples. And he answered unto them, I tell you, if they should hold their peace, even the stones would cry out. Amen. There's things in your life. There's times when we need to be crying out unto the Lord. And we're not. And even the stones would cry out. Jesus will be worshipped. He will get the glory he's due. Listen to me. Amen. And when he came near, he beheld the city. And he wept over it. He came to the city and he began to cry, began to weep. Wow. Saying, if you had known, even you, at least in this your day, the things which belong to your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. For these, the day shall come upon you, that enemies shall cast a trench about you and compass you round and keep you in on every side and shall lay you even with the ground and your children within you. And they shall not leave in you one stone upon another, because you knew not the time of your visitation. 
because you knew not the time of your visitation. I'm going to ask you to do something, guys. I love that you're part of this online church, but I need you to go into the Word. I'm asking, even as you take the Word out and you read Luke 19, 28 through 44, that your eyes be opened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. He wept even though they praised Him. He wept even though they praised Him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that dusty street with people everywhere crying out, Messiah, King of the Lord. Ho, Hosanna, King of the Lord. You see the donkey. You see his passenger. You see Christ walking in. The screams are louder. The, the palm branches are waved. They would lay them across the street. They would take the prayer shawls out and lay them across the street. Why? Because the king was coming down the road. The palm leaves, the prayer shawls. That's why they said they laid their clothes out, their prayer shawls. They laid out so that he could, he could even proceed as a king would. Oh, it was definitely a red carpet event. But it was carpet was the palm leaves. And, oh, hallelujah, the prayer shawls. The emotions, the screams. Can you even imagine? Hosanna, Hosanna, the King, our Messiah. And there's Jesus. Can you imagine that? How does that look to you? Can you see that in your own mind's eye? Amen. Come on. I love imagining that. But why the donkey? Why the coat? Why did he have a donkey? The donkey, here's some prophetic realities for you. The donkey always symbolized peace. Think about that. The donkey symbolized peace, so he rode in on peace. And the palm branches. We live here at the beach. There's palm trees in our community. This, this person has a palm tree up. This person has a palm tree. I told Candace, you want some palm trees? Let's put some palm trees in the front yard. I want the palm trees because they look good, but I also want the palm trees for what they represent. A palm tree was a Jewish sign. The leaf of the palm, the branch, was a Jewish sign for victory over your enemies. Victory over your enemies. Has the devil grabbed a hold of you? Has the devil tried to hurt you? Has the devil tried to harm you? Is the devil trying to harm you even now? Can you say, I choose to believe that the palm, that the victory is mine? Amen and amen. I'm jumping ahead in the sermon. Let me hold back. Hallelujah. There was shouts in this time with Jesus. There was shouts. There was praises. There was honor. There was respect. And there was tension from the religious. My uh, rabbi, rebuke your disciples, they said. They praised Jesus, yet he wept over his city. Why? Because they did not know the hour of their visitation. If you grab a hold of one nugget, one nugget from this sermon, is to grab a hold of and to know the hour of the visitation of the Lord in your life. The visitation of the Lord in your life. Amen. See, they wanted an earthly kingdom. They wanted an earthly kingdom. And it's coming, I tell you, it's coming. But they wanted this earthly kingdom that Jesus would come to overtake the Roman Empire. Jesus, our Lord, our Savior today. Bethlehem ignored Jesus. Jerusalem rejected him. The house of Israel denied him. What about us today? What about us here in America? What about where you're at? What about in our own homes? What about you and I? Do we realize the hour of our visitation? Hey, man, come on. Can we cry out Hosanna? Can we praise him today? Or do we, or do the rocks, do the inanimate objects have to cry out because we will not? Do the rocks in your community, the rocks in your home they have to cry out Hosanna, Hosanna? Or are we willing to cry it out? Oh, hallelujah. The rocks that have no inheritance, no treasures, no reward, but they'll cry out to the Warren. They'll cry out to the Lord. Amen. Does Jesus see us praise with joy? Or does he see us praise to the eyes of our tears? Does he hear our cry? Does he see our praise and our words and our deeds and our actions and our thought life? Or does he cry over our lives? Does he cry and weep over our lives that are damned because we cannot recognize the hour of his visitation? He cried as he walked into the city. As they were praising him, yet he cried. Does he, as you're praising him, does he cry? Or can he say, yes, that's my child? Oh, do we know the hour of the visitation? John 1.11 says, he came to his own people, yet they received him not. When we sing and praise Jesus, is he holding back his tears? Or is the tears coming down his face? Or is he, is he receiving our worship, knowing that we're truly receiving him as our own? And he's receiving us that way. Jesus didn't meet. The, the, when we read through the, the Luke, Luke 19 here, we see that Jesus didn't meet their earthly expectations. Does he meet yours? Or should we meet his? 
Think about that. Did Jesus meet our expectations or should instead we need to meet his? They praised him, yet did not know him, did not intimately know him. They did not know who he was or what he came to bring. And I pray your eyes are open by the fire of God right now. Amen. There's some of you, even as you're watching this, you feel that spirit of the Lord upon you right now. You're saying yes, and you're opening up to a new revelation. Share this video. There's someone you know. There's someone you know. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. There's someone you know that needs to see this video. Click the share button. Click the share button. They need to see this video. There's someone right now. They're watching this. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. They're watching this, and they're going, I need to see this. Uh, when they're part of the world they're in, they're saying, I needed to see this. Amen. Share this video. Hallelujah. Are we singing Hosanna to a Messiah that we don't know? Have we walked into the Holy of Holies? Or are we satisfied as standing at the threshold, the door, only looking in at the kingdom? I want to talk to you. Jesus here was talking about his kingdom, and they denied him. His kingdom, they knew him not. His kingdom, he said, oh, oh they wanted another kingdom. They wanted Jesus to meet their expectations instead of him being their central focal point, and they needed to meet his. Come on salvation oh hallelujah i believe those who win a soul is wise salvation is most important but the salvation is not the ending listen to me for my pentecostal friends when you begin when you receive the gift of the baptism of the holy spirit and you speak in tongues that's not the end yes yeah, so we're talking about salvation is an entry point it is going through the threshold but there's so much more in the kingdom of god amen bill johnson said many have been most have been saved enough to make it into heaven, but they've not repented enough to go into the fullness of the kingdom. I speak the fullness of the kingdom over you. May you see the signs and wonders and miracles. May angels encompass around you. Hallelujah. May you walk in the prophetic realities with words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the working of miracles. Come on, who wants to work in miracles? I bless you and I ask the Lord to impart that into you. Why? Because Christ came to bring this reality, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. As he has done, so should we, and even more. I bless you for being a part of this second item. And I ask you to grab a hold. I grab a hold of this sermon and say yes and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Well, we cannot wait for something to happen. Let me say this again. Too many of us, we're waiting. There's people that are waiting for revival to come. They're waiting for the next outpouring. They're waiting for this one to be healed. They're waiting for this miracle to come forth in the government. They're waiting. But we must not wait. We must go and do. We must be the mouthpiece for the Lord. We must be the hands and feet of Jesus. We must recognize the kingdom and move into the kingdom. Amen and amen. Do you recognize the hour of visitation? So we'll pass Pastor Wayne, is this my hour? You were born for such a time as this. Amen. That's what the word promises us, that he predestined you because he foreknew you. If he foreknew you and predestined you, this is your time. Hallelujah. Come on. This is your hour of visitation. This is not only the hour of visitation of God in your life. This is your hour, your time, your season upon this earth. Do you realize you only live once? Come on. It is appointed unto man to die. To live once and then die, do you recognize? I don't believe in reincarnation. We are here. We are on this earth for this season to bring the kingdom of God. Amen and amen. Do you recognize? Well, two or three are gathered. Do you know? Amen. There's more than two or three of you watching this. Amen. We're gathered together through the internet. We're gathered together. Amen and amen. Through social media to be, hallelujah, the body where two or three are gathered. He is. Jesus Christ is right here in this studio. Amen. Jesus is right there with you. Can you reach out your hand and say, yes, Lord, hold me. Yes, Lord, teach me. Yes, Lord, lift me up. Yes, Lord, let me, let me be subject to your kingdom and Help me walk in your kingdom. Can you do that? Can you do that? Halaba, shikola mahai. Hey, men and amen. It's time for the kingdom of God to manifest. Hallelujah to your life. It's time for the kingdom of God to manifest. Hallelujah in the lives around you. He, oh, hallelujah. Can you walk into the fullness? Hey, men and amen. Well, someone, someone on this, I'm telling you, you write in the comments right now, Hosanna. Hallelujah, you write in there Messiah. You write in there Jesus. You write in there King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You write in the comments of this video sermon right now, wherever you're watching this, amen. Click the share button and I pray the fire of God come upon you. Amen, that it would just, just enrapture you. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Shalom. Kundala Mahai. There's someone watching this right now. You've been saying, Lord, I'm waiting for my destiny. I've been wanting my destiny. I've been wanting my destiny. You've been looking. Hey, you've been looking. The Lord's called you in the ministry. You know who you 
you are. He's called you in the ministry. And you're saying, Lord, I don't know where to even begin. I don't know even where to go. But the Lord's going to give you it. Tomorrow, there's going to be a phone call. There's going to be a phone call. And it's going to be a connection. Listen, there's going to be a connection. You know who you are. The connection is going to come through. And you're going to begin to walk in ministry. And it's going to begin, hallelujah, in the traditional, but will end in untraditional. It will begin in tradition. Listen to me. But it will end in the untradition. Amen. You will walk in from tradition to untraditional, but you will lead many people into the kingdom. You know who that is. Amen. Watch for that. Watch for that. Oh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Guys, I love preaching about Jesus. I love preaching about the Lord. I love preaching about our destiny in him. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Someone cry out, Hosanna, hallelujah. Who wants, who watching this? Do you, do you want to walk in, breathe in, and live the very atmosphere of God? Do you want the angels to just to minister around you, the signs and wonders and miracles to come forth? Do you want to lead your family into the kingdom? Amen. Someone praise the Lord with me. Come on, wow. We're going to jump into Hebrews real quick. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Amen and amen. Come on, share this video. Somebody's going to be blessed. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Amen. Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I can call upon my daddy and I say, Daddy, I need to enter the throne room. I need to come. I need to ascend in your throne room. And I don't have to worry about my past sins, my past failures. I know I've been covered by the blood. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter to the holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, by which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, the flesh, and having a high priest over us in the house of the Lord, over the house of the Lord, amen, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. I love that. Having our hearts sprinkled from an even conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You are born again. If you're born again, you're as holy. Hallelujah. You're as holy. Amen and amen. It's the holiest. You can walk into the holy place with the kingdom by the blood. Amen. Of Jesus. Listen to this. Boldness. That means you're open. You're blunt. You're direct. Doesn't mean you're rude or hateful, but it means you're open. You're blunt. You're direct. It says the holiest in the very presence of God. By the blood of Jesus is his works, not yours. Come on. His works. A new and living way. We're not under a sacrificial law anymore. He was the perfect sacrifice. His flesh. His righteousness. We can draw near. What does that mean? It means come visit. Spend time. It means just... Hallelujah. As I said, reach out and say, Lord, I know you're here. Let me grab a hold of you. Let me grab a hold of your garment. Let me grab a hold of your hand, Jesus. Come into me and just be my Lord. Amen and amen. With full assurance of faith. Confidence. Confidence. I'm confident as you're watching it, the Holy Spirit is with you. I'm confident as you watch it, the Spirit of God is with you. I'm confident as you share this, the fire of God is going to fall upon you. I say that in faith and make it a decree. I'm confident that as upon this world, I will live for the Lord. And when I leave this world, I'll be with the Lord. Amen. How about you? No evil conscience. We are cleansed by the blood, washed by the water. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord. We must seek Jesus and receive His ways on earth now. No more standing at the threshold and looking in. No more saying, I'm here. I want to go in. It's like standing at the threshold of Starbucks. You smell the coffee. Oh, what a great aroma. Are you going to walk in and take of the goods? Amen. Come on. My friends here, I'm not going to say women, but I'll be nice, but my friends here that want to go shopping, do you open the door and say, look at everything? Or do you walk in and take advantage of the spoils of the war where Jesus has won the victory? Amen. Go deeper into the deeper realms. Matthew 6, 6 through 8 tells us about the secret place through boldness, through prayer, through fasting. Let's go beyond the door of access into the secret place of God. Amen. Into the holy of holies. Amen. How about you? Come on. Wow. John Wesley. John Wesley said he fasted two times a week. And all the ministers under him fasted two times a week to stay in that place. Amen. They, were, they, they denied the flesh and they walked in the spirit of the Lord. They sought God through prayer and fasting. Why? Because they wanted more. They wanted more. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Wow. Psalm 63, 1 through 8. I'm not going to read it here now because of time's sake, but I want you to read it. Psalm 63, 1 through 8. It describes a man longing and seeking God. Does that sound like you? Are we longing? Are we seeking Hosanna? Are we crying out Messiah? Amen and amen. Psalm 92 and 12. Now on this psalm, I think of palm leaves. I think of Jesus. Amen. Palm leaves mean Jesus. Think about this. The righteous shall flourish. Psalm 92 and 12. The righteous 
Amen. Shall flourish like the palm tree. John 12, 12 through 13. They took palms and they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. This fulfilled the prophecy in Zechariah 9, 9. The prophecy of the palm tree. Amen. I believe heaven can invade earth. The kingdom of God can come. Amen and amen. As we cry out. Hosanna. Listen to me as I end. Revelation 7, 9. I beheld a great multitude, which no man can number, amen and amen, of all nations and people and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the throne with their clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Think about that. Revelation 7, 9. You and I will enter the kingdom of God. We will worship God. We will raise palms high, praising the one who made victory re real, who completed the work for you and I. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Can somebody say amen? I want the very atmosphere of heaven in your home, in your life, through this church, through this ministry. Amen and amen. Will you recognize the hour of visitation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Timothy 2 through 8 says, Lift up holy hands and hallelujah, your hands, every one of them. Listen to me. Lift up holy hands. Now it says here in Revelation, think about it, in Revelation that we'll hold up palms. Amen. Palm leaves. But it says here in 1 Timothy 2 8, 2, 8, lift up holy hands. What do you see in the hands? They're called palms. Amen. Come on. They're called palms. Don't wait till you get to heaven to praise God. Raise your hand right where you're at, unless you're driving. You shouldn't be watching this driving. Amen. Raise your hand and say, Hi, I praise you, Jesus. Fire of God, come upon me. Holy Spirit, come. Angels, angels will you worship with me and call them into worship with you. Amen. This day, this hour of visitation, praise your, probably raise your hands to the Lord. Cry out in praise. Let's go beyond the door of access into the holy of holies. Let's go into heaven. Grab a hold of, amen, the promise of heaven and pull them into earth now. If you're watching this and you need a miracle in your body, reach into heaven and say, I receive it now. I receive it now. I receive a miracle. Of, ooh, wow, there's someone watching this. You're about to go for a divorce this week. Listen, the hallelujah. You're not going to meet with the divorce attorney. The Holy Spirit's going to visit you in your dream. Amen. He's going to visit you in your dream and he's going to show you how to handle your spouse. Amen. He's going to show you what to do. He's already working in the heart of your spouse. The divorce will not go through, says the Lord. You know who you are. Amen. This day, this hour of visitation, raise your palms. Let's go beyond the door of access into the Holy of Holies. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone cry out, Hosanna. Someone cry out, Messiah. Someone cry out with me, Jesus, Yeshua, King of kings and Lord of lords. Let the God of the hallelujah, the atmosphere of heaven enter your heart today. Amen and amen. I ask the Holy Ghost to just come and impart into you as you watch this, the fire of the living God, an eye-opening eye revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And Hosanna, Hosanna, be made, be made, hallelujah, King in your life. Can you recognize the palms? Can you raise them as you will raise, you will raise them in the end in, in, in times. You will raise them, as it says in Revelation, with palms in your hands, amen, Christ out. Can you raise them and say, these are my palms, Lord. These are the signs of victory over the enemy. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm honored to be able to speak over you, Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter. Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Amen and amen. He rose for you and I. Thank you for being a part of the secondadam.com. I'm going to ask you to do something I normally don't ask. I'm going to ask you to literally go back and watch this again. Watch this again. This time from the spirit realm, just receive. Let the Holy Spirit speak in you up. Watch this again. Share this video. For those who have sown into the ministry, thank you. We're Let me just go and say this. We are we need a new camera. We need a new computer. We have several things we need here at the ministry, amen, to go to the next level. And I honor every one of you. Our church app is almost live. Should be up by next Sunday. Amen and amen. And I thank you for that. If you want to donate, Amen. Of course, there's a donate button on the website, thesecondadam.com. And we thank you for your tithes, your love offerings. Amen. Those who, your tithes are taking us and helping us reach so many people. We honor you. Partnership, three loves of partnership. They may be changing soon, so grab a hold of them now. There's a few slots still open. Thesecondadam.com forward slash partner. Check it out. Amen. In the partnership, you get the text with me, email me. You get the phone counseling with me. Amen and amen. We, we just prophesy and bring the word of the Lord over you. Also, if you want to give, amen, just pay. Here's a simple way to give. On your cell phone, on your cell phone, we have a new way of giving. Just simply type in. You want to send it to 77977, 77977, and you want to send 
TSA, the second item. TSA, send TSA to 77977. You'll receive back uh, information on how you can give through your phone. It's really simple, makes it really easy. Amen. And I just pray it's a blessing to you. At our, our local church here, that's what I do. They're passing the offer plate around. I pull out my phone. I cop in, I give, and I'm able to give to my church here locally. So thank you as you give your love offerings. You know, sowing into the ministry is showing love for the kingdom of God, the King of Kings, and we honor you for that. Be sure to check us out next Sunday. We have an Easter sermon coming up. We have special guests coming up. Amen and amen. We have different evangelists, different ministers going to be coming on board here at the Second Item. In fact, today, this evening, amen, we are recording with a, a good friend of mine, a brother in Christ, and uh, we'll have more information on that very soon. But until next week, be sure to go to the secondatom.com, place your prayer request, watch this video again. Let us pray for you. Put your prayer request in at the secondatom.com. Let our prayer team just pray and decree healing and miracles over your life. Amen. And be sure to be here next week again at the secondatom.com. For our partners, God bless you. Schedule with us. Remember, if you've partnered with us, go ahead and schedule with us. Grab a hold of your free resource this month. Two ways you can hear from God, the DVD. And I look forward to hearing from you again. This is Pastor Wayne. Praise Jesus with you because he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. By his blood, we are saved. We are healed. We're redeemed. God bless you. I believe in you because I believe in Jesus Christ in you. God bless. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might. But he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't gonna be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our king.